and I'm just going to flow in what God has given me. Hallelujah. I got up here a couple of weeks ago and I ministered and I shared what God had given me about reimagine. And he began to tell me to dream again, to live again, to come alive to the things that he has destined for us. Okay? And then um, we decided, you know, we were going to do these shirts and reimagine. And it was dream. And it says envision. And it, and it says um, integrate and envision. But then when I looked at it, God says, look at the side. Look at the acronym. D-I-E, what does it say? Die. That we have to die to our old self and come alive to him. You can't put old wine in a new wine skin. Amen. God says, allow me to recalibrate, to reorchestrate, to reposition you. So that means you got to die to the things that we're so used to doing to the things that have gotten us off focus, to the things that have gotten us distracted, amen, that don't bring God glory, amen. And so he's saying now that allow me to allow you to dream, to follow the vision. And when I looked at this word, it says that uh, to come up with a new design, a new plan, to believe again. And that's a big word. God says that he wants us to believe. This year, God dealt with me and my family on believe. And we as Christians, y'all, unfortunately, a lot of us, we don't believe. We don't. And that's the foundation of who we are in Christ Jesus. You have to believe and confess. But do you really believe? Do you really believe? And he took me to Mark 9, 23. It says, Jesus said unto them, If thou canst believe that all things are possible to him that believe. That's a big word. That's a big word. And it says can't. That means to be able to, to have the power and the state of mind to change. And you talk about change, a lot of us, and me included, you know, I remember when I, I worked at the phone company, they get to change my desk. Don't change my desk. Leave me right here. Because I, I got comfortable. I liked what, you know, what I was doing, I, I, my, my, my position. So a lot of times it goes against what we've gotten complacent with. When God wants to shake up the camp. When God says, come on, we're we going to go this way now. Amen. And he says, believe is to think to be true, to be persuaded, to be uh, uh, at a place of confidence, to trust in things you can't see. That's the basis of believing. In Galatians 2 and 20, it says, I am crucified. That means to die with Christ. Nevertheless, I live in full active strength or force. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by faith yeah. amen belief of the son of God who loved me and gave his only begotten son do we really think that God sent his son to save us to live mediocre lives to be conformed to the world and not to be world changers to stand on the promises of God that are yea and amen to stand in authority in the devil that's trying to kill steal and destroy we have the power we have the authority amen and so when I was uh, last week uh, Tony Evans buried his wife and I uh, was on YouTube before we started the fast and they had did a panel when he lost his niece I think it was his sister's child and they, was, and they had decided to do a panel as a family just to answer some of the questions that the congregation may have had and one of the things that they asked Tony Evans the family did was well dad how you stand so strong you know he, 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 he takes on you know the burden of the family so they say dad how, how, you know, how, how you doing it without falling without Without, you know crumbling without um, 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 doubting and he said simply I believe what I preach that's what he said and so to watch him now standing that same strength in front of his wife the love of his life and now to see what really really blessed me I don't know if you all saw but their baby son 
stood and questioned God. God, this was an opportunity for you to get the glory. You got people all over the nation that's praying for mom. This was an opportunity for you to get the glory, God. What happened? You know, and God says two answers. Did y'all did y'all see it? What did he say? Yes and yes. Either you're going to live on this side or you're going to live on this side. Hallelujah. And again, because of who we are, we win. We win. Either you're going to be healed on this side or you're going to be healed on that side. Because we win. And God is saying to us, we win, Rhema. We win. We have the authority. We have the power. We are God's children. We bear his name. He died for us. Amen. So take your rightful place in him. Amen. Hallelujah. And then God says the faith as a mustard seed. If we would just, again, plant that and allow it to grow. And one of the things that I realized and noticed that, you know, since I've been saved, God a lot of times parallel my natural life with my spiritual life. And when he began to deal with me with my faith, he took me back to, again, when we went on our journey. If my new, our first journey was a couple of years ago. I believed God for my dog. My dog was going with us. They didn't want no more. He coming. He coming. Well, this time, God, I believe something bigger. I believe for something bigger. And sometimes, guys, faith don't look pretty. It don't look pretty. But we so accustomed to doing it our way. We so accustomed to being comfortable. I believe God as long as I'm comfortable. And then when I become uncomfortable, then I become, you know, a little shaky. No, this ain't God. No, this ain't God. Think about Mary. Do you think she was comfortable when saying yes to God? And she was carrying the Savior, the ridicule James shared with us on Christmas. Back then, to be pregnant and unmarried, you, that calls for death. But she was willing to sacrifice based on her faith, based on what she believed God for. But then on the other hand, you know, uh, Elizabeth and her husband, Zachariah, when the angel, he was a priest. He was a man of God in the temple. And God sent his angel and said, I'm going to bless you and your wife. She's been bearing y'all older, you know. So he was like, he didn't believe. God shut his ears and his mouth until the, the miracle came to be. Our belief in God is a big thing, guys. It's a big thing. And it matters. Amen. It matters to God when we take a position of belief. We take a position of faith. And that we can accomplish the unexpected. That we can believe God for things that the world say no to. You know, the world sent us, they, the, the, they sent us letters saying, yeah, yeah, no, y'all going to get it, y'all not going to get it, y'all not going to get it. And here it comes, we got it. Amen. God started in the beginning of the new year. God showed me doors are, are open for us. He ministered to me. I had to go get my son, pick him up. And I, I'm a stickler for time. And I was running late, and I, I got antsy. And I was like, I'm going to be late. I, I can't be late. But as I was driving down 59, and 59 have a lot of lights. It's like an expressway, but it have a lot of lights. You know that God, every light was green. And when I got to my destination, God says, I was on time. He said, doors have been opened for you. And he has been showing me that since the year, you know, started. Doors are open. And not just for me. But for those who name the name of the season that we're in, you have to discern the season that you're in. Amen. We are in a season to believe God, to believe God. But we must yield ourselves unto God. We need to do a checkup. We need to do a tune-up. We need to be made whole. And God just began to minister to me again about wounds. You know, a lot of us have been wounded. You know, and wounds need to be healed from the inside out. They need to be healed from the, year, the inside out. 
And then um, he showed, uh, you know, people that are on life support in the hospitals, they go to the doctors and get the instructions on how, you know, to, to get off. God said, we got to come to him. We got to get the instructions. We got to get the healing. We have to be made whole. And the scars are just an example of what we've been through. When Jesus rose from the dead and showed Thomas his scars, it was a, from a place of authority. It was from a place of authority. We have authority, Rhema. We have authority. We must speak those things that are not as though they were. Write them down. Make them plain. Hallelujah. Keep them before you. Hallelujah. Keep them before you. Allow Holy Spirit to lead him to God. Hallelujah. And Bishop was telling us last week, you know, that we have to, again, reposition ourselves for God to do the work in us. During this fast, I'm hearing people say, you know, God is telling us about us. God is telling us about me. You know, and again, all the promises of God are yea and amen. And if we just follow God, we win every time. We win. We win. Hallelujah. And so, therefore, we must be able to expand and evolve. We must put ourselves on the table to be ministered to. Hallelujah. And then God wants to bring us in to build a relationship with him. Hallelujah. Some of us, our perspective of God is not the perspective that he wants us to have. It's a little distorted because of some of the things we've been through. And so God says that he wants us to build a relationship. And a lot of times when we build things, it's bigger than when we started out. Right. Amen. It's bigger than you. Right. And so God wants to change every area of our life. Amen. God wants to blow your mind. Yeah. God wants to blow your mind. He wants you to believe in him again. And then he took me back to um, last week, Bishop, you know, shared a little of my business, a lot of my business about where I grew up. And I grew up in Inglewood, and I was a product of my environment, you know. So I, I wanted to, you know, I, I dated the guy across the street, because back then, my mama didn't let us go nowhere. You know, she didn't have a car, so she didn't go nowhere, and we didn't either. And so when I met Bishop, you know, he wasn't my type. Like he said, you know, he didn't have an earring, and you know, he didn't have all of that. But he began, began to show me things that I had never seen before. And God says that he wants us to come away with him so that he can show us things that he's never, we've never seen before. He wants us to build a relationship with him. Yeah, he, we had to draw close to each other in a way where I was at least being able in his presence for him to do some of the things that he wanted to do as, as it relates to, you know, building a foundation, building a relationship. And then God, on the other hand, he began to send people and place people in my life that became surrogates because I wasn't saved. I didn't grow up in church, so I didn't know about church. And so God began to put people in my life that began to drop nuggets. He sent a customer, you know, over the phone. We handled five different states, and this particular customer told me that I was dating a preacher. That blew my mind. I was like, well, how do you know that? And so I'm looking out through his information. But again, it was parallel to what God was doing in my life. He was blowing my mind, and God was too. And so I was open. <laughs> I'm telling the truth. <laughs> and so, you know, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is I had to be open to something different. I had to be willing to open my heart to something different. And I would not be standing here, the woman of God that I am, if I had not done so. If I had not done so. Now, was it easy? No, it wasn't easy. Because I didn't want him to know I didn't know this stuff. Yeah. Even though he knew I didn't know it. I didn't want him to know I didn't know it, even though he knew. You know, so I, that was intimidating. You know, but I was able to, again, be open and experience God on another level. Yeah. Amen. And so we have to be able to, again, position ourselves to be able to receive the instructions and the job description that comes with us being who we are. We are Christians. We are saved. That, that, there, there are certain things that, that come with that. And so we have to go into God. We have to be able to receive those instructions. And sometimes they change. But it's still his righteousness that we walk in, in Christ. That don't change. That don't change. Amen. 
Amen. And as I close, as I close, God just wants to know, do you believe that all things are possible?